Yushi, and I am hosting here at Indiecade in lovely Culver City. It's a celebration of indie games and innovation. Here with me is one of the developers behind Armalo, the lovely trailer you just saw. And gentlemen, would you care to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. My name's uh, Trent Custers. I'm a director at League of Geeks. Yeah, I worked on this game. A little bit, you know, just some things just here and there. there. Yeah, just sprinkled some stuff on top and... You just added the magic. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I like that. All right, we're going to work with that. Thank you, Trent. Yeah. Magic maker. <laughs> and uh, my name's Tom. I go by the name Syndicate, YouTuber, and I already know this guy from partying very hard with him, so yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of faith in anything he does, so I'm stoked to play this. Thank you. What's up, guys? I'm Coop, producer of Skybound. Very whoop smash some Armello. I mean, hi, everybody. I am Darren Ross, yes. the creator of Superfight and uh, professional wolf slayer. This man <laughs> and internet connection slayer. Wait, if you're a professional wolf slayer, these guys should be, be worried, slayer. right? Oh, am I going to be a wolf? I shouldn't have said that if I'm going to be a wolf. <laughs> you can be a wolf because, you know, I'm going to be the Kung Fu Panda. Oh, is there, oh, all right. Hey, I got to get back into multiplayer. Here we yeah. go. Skirmish. So these three gentlemen are going to be playing a match, and we're going to be doing color commentary. And yeah, I, we are. And if I ask you about the game. We certainly are. So, so first well, of all, would you like to describe your game for us? Yeah, sure. So we like to actually say that Armello is Game of Thrones meets Kung Fu Panda. It's kind of like the High Line, I guess you could say. Um, but it's a we digital a card and board game. So we've basically taken video uh, board games and taken them to the video game format. So you, if you can imagine a hex board with you know, animals running around like rat rogues and wolf warriors and things like that, you control one hero uh, from the world of Armello who's out on a quest to save the kingdom from the dark king who's rotting from this force called the Rot. Ooh, mm, awesome. He's going mad. Why anthropomorphized animals? Uh, it gives us a few different things, actually. It's, um, first of all, it's easy to convey. You know, in a digital board game, it's hard to get story across and character and everything. We don't have as many outlets to be able to do that, like cutscenes and things. Uh, I'm back so when you have a, a rat character, it's, you, know, you sort of get an idea of what type of character they're going to be in the game. So we can lean into those stereotypes there, for <gasps> sure. Are you, are you being animalist? I, like, we are very What, just because they're a rat? That yeah, means they're that like means... ratty and sneaky? Well, you know, in Armello, that's the, that's the way it she, is. I think yeah. she just described that character very well. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, chat room, if you have any questions for any of these people, please definitely throw them up there. We'll be getting them in a minute. There's a delay, and also we're loading it. So uh, wait a couple, a couple of seconds and then throw up some questions. We're getting a, getting a match started here? Yeah, we're trying to get a match started right here. Uh, right now, just trying to get this uh, Steam thing going on. And you can play up to, with uh, uh, up to three of your friends. You can. So it's a four-player game. You can play online multiplayer or uh, you know, private games with your pals. And yeah, there's uh, over 130 cards in the game. We've got eight playable heroes. Uh, the map regenerates every, like rebuilds every time you play. Uh, quest lines, over 200 quests that you know we throw the quest lines together as you're playing, so you never get the same quest lines twice. It's basically one of these games that every time you play it, the game is different. The cards you get, the map you get, the, the heroes on the board. It's uh, it has a lot to offer, really. So, what were some of the challenges of bringing a like a, a board game into a digital game? Uh, yeah, that's actually a really good question. So a big one is communicating all of the things. So in a board game, for example, you just have it there on the table and everyone's seeing the mechanics and everything there. Uh, it's all displayed at all times. But when you have a video game, we actually have to, anything that we want to display, we have to actually oh, make sure to put it on the screen, you know? And, and sometimes when you've just got a screen, <laughs> like screen space, you just can't get everything on there. So sort of boiling the game down into like, what do we definitely need to show? What can we, you know, get away with hiding and obfuscating and things like that? And also that was part of the quest too, is, you know, in trying to push tabletop design into video games and things like that, it's, there will be questions about, Dominic. you know, how can we experiment with the format? And, you know, one of the big things was like obfuscating mechanics and stuff, because everything's no generally very all. transparent in so, board games. So smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. lies. That's it. Excellent. Lies, treachery, it works, all of that. It yeah. works well. Now, have you had a lot of experience with board no. video games? Um, That's not really your no, I'm a area. I'm a monopoly professional. Uh, okay. Oh. Just throw it out there right He's the now. the biggest monopoly Okay, so what is. what is your piece of choice? Are you, are you usually the top hat the or the car. dog? The car. The car. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but like, I've come to, like, so these kind of board games, I'm getting more and more into it. 
uh, I've just, like, is it Risk? Yeah, I've just, yeah. I've just, for the first time ever, I've recently played, played Risk with a team. And um, I actually really enjoyed it. So the more and more time I spend in America, because oh, obviously not nice. from around here, um, it's been a more and more common thing to do. So pulling it over to video games, I can do it anywhere, really. Yeah. Here, so I'm all for it. Yeah, Risk is a good one as well. You know, um, their, their digital version, like we looked at, and took a few lessons from and everything. So there are a lot of cool like ports of uh, board games okay, to I mean. video games. But, there is all, but I guess the thing with Armello is it's digital first. We prototyped it on paper for about eight months, but we, all, we also didn't Same release a physical time. version. That is sort of unusual. Most of the video games that are, are based on previously made physical games. Yep. So are there plans to make a physical game of Armello? <laughs> We'd love to actually make a physical game of Armello. You know, we're big board game fans. Um, we don't have, you know, anything in the pipeline at the moment, but hopefully if the game, you know, continues to be successful, then we can, you know, partner up with someone and get it out there or, you know, release it ourselves. Maybe do a Kickstarter or something, I don't know. We'd a love to get it out there. Kickstarter, how would you them. know how to do something like yeah, that? Yeah, I know, right? I but guess we'd have to have done one already. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so you did have a Kickstarter Yeah, we did before. have a Kickstarter, yeah. So we had a Kickstarter um, for our Mellow back at the start of 2014. Get, and, get ready. And yeah, we, uh, it, it went really well, you know, I guess we're here with the right. finished game, so... I accidentally just left the game. You what have you, do Sorry, what have you done? <laughs> I know, I had one job, they were like, right. Tom, here's an invite, and then I declined it. <laughs> do you want to send me that one again? Send you the invite yeah, again? Yeah, I'm a professional at games. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a I YouTube just want channel you where I play video games. That because of what you did, I have to select an, auction, an option that says, unready. Uh, <laughs> like, that's the most, like, backwards moving. Listen, but I'm, I'm sorry unready for now. All right, do I have to invite you again? Invite yes, you do. All right, here we go. See the invite me here to play video games, and I just don't do it. Do Got I it. need to invite you again? Nope, I'm good. And for the sake of authenticity, I think we're using Steam that's actually powered by literal Steam <laughs> on the yeah. tabletop, I think. All right, we got this. <laughs> Based on All the right. way it's behaving. All right. Looks ready. like we got a match ready. Don't Stay make, me, don't make me on ready again. Right. Realistically, we were just stalling. Now what because, do I do? Oh, we know that those doesn't. three mace. Oh, I get to pick game. my. Oh, I'm a bear. Actually, them I'm two a bear. Game. Uh, I'm a big old bear. I just lost connection. Uh, Send me that? another invite. So, so while they're yeah, getting yeah. the match yeah. together, right, can you, you tell me a little bit about there. the lore of the world? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, Armello, yeah. the king, is yeah. a, a sort of a stranger to yeah, Armello. Came to Armello a long time ago under mysterious circumstances and built all of these clans up. So, this screen that we're sort of looking at now is the is uh, <laughs> oh, the, the lines the king. Yeah, That's a surprise. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So this screen, we have uh, the clans here. So there's the rabbit, the wolf, the rat, and the bear clan. And they sent, he, what he did was he united those clans. They were all warring clans. Armello was, uh, war, you know, a warring realm for a long time. He brought the clans together, brought peace to the realm, again, and essentially they helped him it's at the router level create right Armello. You know, basically, so the rabbits um, built his beautiful palace. The rats set up the political structure. The bears, you know, came through and had like counselors yeah. and everything and work with the wild and, you know, keep the Can sort of the realm safe from the dark powers of the rot. And the wolves basically are the military powers That's within, the you know, most within our right They now. donated the king's guard uh, to, to the king. And so there's, and, but now we're at this point where, and actually if you play the prologue, you get to step through this story um, scripted tutorial. Mike, where you find out, you see the king sort of fall. The internet's um, going know, out something at for some the reason, whatever level. it may be. Uh, the that rot seems to have taken the king, which is this dark, mysterious force within Armello. And um, it's twisting him, sort of like a worm tongue, tongue thing from, you know, from nice. uh, yeah, like the Rings king of Rome. Yeah, Very nice. Exactly. And so My now what's happened there. is, tragically, the clans have had to come together and say, okay, all bets are off. We just gotta, we just gotta get rid of this king. Otherwise, he's gonna, you know, take our kingdom down with him. And let's send out our heroes. So they put out the heroes call, and a bunch of heroes in Armello stepped forward and are now off journeying across Armello to become king or queen. And you said there's 200 different quest lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 200 individual quests are more than 200 individual quests within the game. And as you're playing the game, you're choosing which quests essentially to, uh, to go for, and you're, so you're building your own quest line as you play. And then it spits it out to this little journal within the game, so at the end you can read back this fairy tale story of your, your hero's journey that's unique to that match. What clans do you guys see yourselves as belonging to? Yo, I'm, I'm just a rat. I'm like the <laughs> sneaky, okay. like, I, I was just about to start playing as it, and it's like sneaky, assassin, 
That's kind of like that's, that's my angle deal. at every video game, like Skyrim, Fallout, everything. I'm just sneaky as possible. So you better watch yourselves when <laughs> the, the, the steam when machine works the back there. Yeah, we'll, uh, nice. We we'll got some going. animal based <laughs> trash talk starting <laughs> now. Oh, yeah, we got I got some Kung Fu Panda, though. Brute Force. <laughs> I'm the be. monk. And he's a monk. Yeah, I'm gonna be a whale. I'll sleep between your legs. <laughs> Darren, I didn't get uh, I didn't get a chance to see. Did they show in the trailer um, the trailer that played? Did it show the animation? Yeah, that opening animation, which Oof. is just gorgeous. By yeah, the way, I don't know geez. who did that, but they yeah, did that... an amazing job. And as I was watching that, I was like, oh, pretty animal, pretty animal. And then the bear. This looks amazing. I was like, I want that bear. I want to be that bear. And then I saw it, and I had it. And I'm like, I'm the bear. And yeah. then I quit. So, and I'm, I feel like I beat the game. I got the bear. Yeah. And we're I quit. So, right. That was right. the yeah, important yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, uh, totally yeah. satisfied. The incentive chain was there. I accomplished it, so I'm good. Yeah, the big thing um, with that as well, with those trailers that you um, that you mentioned, is something with uh, Mello. It's a, it's a board game, really, at the end of the day, right? And so we've got these hexes, and we've got these big characters stomping around and everything. It was really important that it was, you know, that it's a, it feels like this big world as well, that it, you are going on this huge adventure, and, you know, that it's, it's bigger than it is, and every game has to feel that way. So those trailers are actually sort of like a strategical decision for, um, from us as well, where we wanted to give the players a glimpse at what the world of Armello is, the tone of Armello, the, the music, the characters, everything, so that when they actually get into the game, when we first show them gameplay, they're bringing that, you know, they're projecting that into the world. And I think we build a lot on that. I think some of the best games out there, you know, really help flesh out that world without actually having to put it in the game, if that makes yeah. sense. You yeah, know, they sort of, they allude it a lot more. Yeah, a, a lot of like, uh, speak, oh, speaking of music, I don't want to talk about yeah. it. Uh, Lisa yeah. Gerard yeah. did the music, and she does uh, has worked on just some of the most epic movies you can think of, like a lot of Hans Zimmer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How did you hook up with her? So nope. um, one of the directors of the company uh, actually used to live in LA and was in the film scene for a long time. He worked on Gladiator with Hans Zimmer and Lisa and all of that. You and did. Um, no, I didn't. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> at least um, yeah, my, so, my, uh, even yeah, more my business partner. Yeah. Um, and so it, they were they were old friends, and he he reached out and was like, "Hey, we're doing this thing. Do you want to jump on board?" And she she was like, "Cool, yeah." And so her and Michael Allen, who's um, you know the main composer on the game, they worked together. And and delivered this amazing soundtrack yeah, that we have. Talk about setting the tone in that yeah. trailer. It is so epic and swelling. The score. I, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. All of this stuff's really important to us. You know, it really helps build a world and round things out and provide a backdrop for you know these adventures that you're going on and gives context to you know what might you know just rolling dice and things like that. Every little bit adds something different, something new. What were some of the influences for just the whole lore of the game? So it started off, we wanted to build an adventure-based you know, digital board game. Um, and then we actually, uh, one of my other business partners, Blake, he, was, he grew up on Brian Jacques's Redwall novels. Yes, yeah. oh my god. And so he was like, maybe we can do that animal thing that we've been talking about for a while. Um, no, not that thing, the other thing. And, um, You're ready. and yeah, we actually, Oh. We, uh, we just were like, yeah, that's cool. So we sort of set out to do like an animals Game of Thrones style thing. And so they weren't, that was sort of the most direct influence, I guess, because it just, but just in the sense that it kicks, kicks things off. Things. Like I haven't actually read any Red Wall or anything. Oh my God, you have to. Well, it's so great. They, you can read just one of them like real fast, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's like a plane ride or something. They are so great. Oh my God. And you have to, to read the ones with Matthias. Those are the oh, best right. ones. So I actually bought all the books, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this game, I've gotta read some Redwall, and then I was like, no, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it, I don't want it to taint what I do on Armello, like we've gotta forge our own world, and so I sort of just left it there. And yeah, but then we have other things, so like, something that's super important to us is a sense of consequence within like the world, so those old adventure, movies like The Labyrinth, The Dark Crystal, even things like Star Wars, things that had that epic adventure and fantasy, but at the same time 
did have a sense of consequence and, you know, were a tinge darker. Things that scared you as a kid, like, you know, the never-ending story, like with the, I forget the name of the wolf, but, you know, stuff like the that. Gamork. Yeah, the Gamork. Yeah, Gamork. There nice. That's it. Nice. Yeah. I'll tell your references. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're for being the oldest guy at this table right now, because <laughs> I remember that name. And that's good. You, you nailed it on think on all of those, from what yeah. I could tell. I mean, borrowing those elements from those. You can, you can tell you guys are into cool stuff just yep. by looking at the game. You're like, oh, man, these guys knew what they were yeah, doing. <laughs> these guys get it. How, how long was it to make? Four and a half years. Four and a half oh, man. years. That's four and a half yeah. years of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Oh, and then some. Yeah. And you know what I like? One of my favorite things about it, just from the little bit that I played, was the quest system really engages this part of you where it's like, all right, well, you know, you took that tile. That's what you want yeah. to do, do. While you're here, do you want to do something cool or do you kind of not believe in yourself yeah. at all <laughs> and you want to run away? And so every single time I found myself like, I can't admit to this computer that I don't believe I can follow a hamster down the trail. So I'm like, go for it. And it's like, roll, roll, roll. You got hit and you failed. Yeah. I was like, ah. Oh. It's uh, actually like, we've had an issue with that because people like, I just die in the quest all the time. And then we look at the analytics and we're like, well, you're, you're choosing a quest yeah. when you have 20% chance yeah. to you succeed. Suck. Yeah, but we're making bad decisions <laughs> yeah. in life, basically. But then when you, that's the thing, we're sort of saying you could be a hero or you could just, you know, take the safe option and no one chooses the safe option. And I love the way you represented the odds. As yeah, they, right. So you're like, you can visually see how bad your yeah. chances are doing <laughs> yeah. this. You're like, there's still one I can get yeah. up going for. <laughs> so it's like, but that's, oh, I think man. that's, um, that's our mellow really at its core. It's all about, you know, the randomness within that game, like that's what board games are sort of about, you know, you've got the dice rolling, you've got, you know, the drawing of cards and things like that. But with our Mellow, uh, it's all about hedging your bets. We give you so many ways to basically uh, make the odds work in your favor. And that's really where the mastery of our Mellow comes in, is knowing the cards, knowing how to best, you know, play the odds nope. to your favor. Um, when to take that safe option as well. You know, I, I think like that's, you know, there are a few salient moments in your life as an Armello player, and the moment when you start accepting that sometimes you're just going to have to choose the safe, the safe option on quests, <laughs> then uh, that's, a, that's a sort of salient moment in your Armello career right there. Is it, is it safe to say that if you're a gambling man, this is probably <laughs> not the best option for you, and you should yeah, take it a bit calmer a, you and should, pace yeah, yourself? Yeah, you should uh, definitely enter with trepidation if you're a gambling yeah. man. I definitely have to say this, by the way. We're trying to play the game. It's nothing to do with the game. We are being powered by, I think, water-powered internet right now. So that's why we're just having a bit of a struggle. Are you sure you don't want to just make it a physical game that we can just play? Yeah, you're gonna make a physical. Right, actually, Darren, being from the physical game realm, is this something you'd be interested in jumping in and helping with? Can it? You had asked him that earlier, but I was busy arm wrestling the steam robot over here. But can it be made entirely into a physical thing, or are there elements that can only happen because it's digital? So we actually prototyped it on paper for about eight months. That's how we designed the game. Um, but the entire time we were doing it, we were prototyping it for digital platforms. So we knew it was going to go to digital. There was never going to be a physical game. But you could take our mellow and, you know, streamline some stuff, you know, like rip some things out and, you know, make some things just happen, like in regards to, uh, you know, we've got stealth and stuff, so you could probably get a system going for that where we can show some stealth um, I have a really good feeling way. about this voice. Have you, you considered this. changing the game to just be entirely about trying to get a network connection? Because that's <laughs> that is, it is just nothing. Is you just roll for yeah, connection. Yeah, that's it. Well, I think we just beat the network boss right now in this raid. <laughs> oh, who is that? Who's this gray bear? Stay away from my bear, bro. Is that yours? <laughs> I'm, uh, you. no, I'm cool. I'm a <laughs> bear priestess. Give me a fight over the bear. I'm good. Uh, I'm ready. Now what do I do? All right, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm choosing a ring. There we go. I got the jade ring now. I, have I to think we have time to One show ring, off a little bit of the game. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get in. We'll, we'll uh, let these guys go What do I do? It. What do I do? You got to pick one. Okay. I so I'm pick picking these guys down, right? The heart. Am I going to get, get some, some bear hearts? Yeah, your job's to take them out. It was a very good choice. 
Did you just say a very good choice? That's, uh, that's what I All said. Right, I'll wow. see you guys later. Excellent. I think we're going to get along just fine, Patrick. It's been just about fine. Four, four and a half years of bear puns in the studio as well. So. Right. You're, are, we're animal puns just yeah. like the game of yep, the day. They're coming in thick and fast, that's for sure. Yeah. Don't no look at doubt. my screen. Do you get an advantage by looking <laughs> yeah. at my screen? Uh, uh, screen hacking's uh, already begun. You already know I'm a big bear with yeah, a who's stick. This, who's yeah. this big bear? you need to know. Well, you've uh, got, you've got a staff. Oh, wow. Is it, is it my turn to move? Oh my gosh, this looks beautiful. Some, of the, some right, of the influences, the design for the there. game. This is so I Ghibli was that. a big influence. We love I'm, a lot I'm of like, you know, right Studio now, Ghibli's bro. work and everything. Actually, I'm looking at myself. Um, they, they have, you know, I was talking about oh. this notion of uh, um, adventure Stone stories with consequence. Something that Ghibli do very well and that we really wanted to experiment with was this idea of Intern. contrast. So having this beautiful, absolutely stunning, magical place and a world, but then yes. at night, it actually twisting and becoming a bit darker. And, um, you know, and Lisa Gerard, obviously, her voice helps with that, that haunting, you know, um, that haunting tone that she has. And so, yeah, um, Studio Ghibli, their ability to do that, and, you know, their other work, that epic adventure feel that they have, that was definitely um, an influence. But then even those animations, like if you talk about those as a French animation school, uh, called Goblins. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah they're the so, pirates. Yeah, yeah, comes yeah. The and so that's, um, that's a big one for us. So what did I just do? You're on a, you're on a peril, so this is actually, you, someone's played some witch hunters there and you're rolling your, your wits to try and escape them. Okay. But it doesn't, and, doesn't and look like you've done the right. It doesn't look good? No, but Am you're I just, about to die already? Gonna, no, you're just going to lose some magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm fine with that. Armello is a type of game where you can die on the first turn, right. no oh. doubt. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> That makes me feel awesome. I was saying, so, so are we take it in turns? Is it still yeah, my turn? Yeah, it's turn yeah. based. But uh, you can okay. still do things when it's not your turn. So, yeah, if you, so you're heading towards your quest over here. Can yeah. I like key his card? So, when it's while not your in turn in our mellow, yep. you can actually. If you had the key card. <laughs> you can yeah. actually continue playing. So, you can play cards to the board and to other heroes. Um, you can equip cards. You can actually go through read your quests or use the character sheet to actually. Uh, look at what the other heroes have equipped and what their strategies might be. I just want y'all to know I'm armed with some hot wine, so you might want to factor uh, that apologies. into your strategy. <laughs> I was reading a lot of cards. <laughs> I'm being right, tactical with my decisions here, all right? Here. I've got to take you guys down. Yeah, it's, Syndicate it's, is taking this very is it seriously. Is nighttime now? Is it becoming nighttime? Yeah, it's so the there's game? a whole sure day-night cycle in the game as well. And, and the gameplay big, works around that too. Three so spaces. some clans have bonuses during the day to their dice rolls, others have bonuses during the night. So Tom's on a forest tile at the moment, and as it's just gone to night now, because he's in a forest, he's actually going to go stealth. Oh, yeah. So I, you're I, like, I, that's, I'm why, that's why I did yeah, that, to yeah. go stealth. No. Stone, so stone ring Are they working power. against each other in this case? Well, this is the thing. This is the beauty of Armello. It's indirect competitiveness. So essentially, nothing says that they have to go for each other or that they have to team up or anything, but they're all going for the same goal. So at the end of the game, only one of them can be king or queen. So some little alliances will no doubt form, um, but you can also just have a nemesis through the entire game that you're just wailing on back and forth. Is there the option to not become the king or queen yourself, but be like the spider behind the throne? <laughs> yeah, actually, we, you know, oh, it, can act, it can get to a point in a game where you might be like, I'm so far from, <laughs> winning, oh, no. you know, towards the last couple of, couple of turns that I'm just gonna help this person win. And you can sort of like <laughs> piss everyone off by buffing the, another player as they're going for the, for the palace. So I guess in that way you could be. Now, Tom, you said your strategy is usually being the <laughs> roguish, like, sneak. Well, I'm hiding in a tree. Okay, good. Like, so, these guys are out doing epic stuff and battling, and I'm just like, yeah, trees. So true to form. Items. Excellent, so excellent. Like, yes, uh, yeah, gentlemen, yeah. what do your yeah. king-making yeah. strategies spin, usually consist of? I, can, yeah, yeah, work. Uh, you I probably kill equip people. that one as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good strength, excellent yeah. viable option. The more people option. I kill, the closer I am to winning. <laughs> you guys, I, wanna... I have a shield and a spear. <laughs> well, Take that. I, don't care I have a card. Bears. I want to talk about this card that I have. I, I whose can? screen are oh, they yeah. looking at? Who, not, whose screen is up on the thing? I'm Nobody can sure. see my screen, right? No. So I'm going to describe it. It's called Expendables. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like this cute little rabbit holding a torch. Oh! 
just like, oh, like, is it, is it, is it, am oh, I no. reading this the right way? There's just, is it, they're, you're sending them out to die? Is yeah, that what this card yeah, is? Yeah. <laughs> look, so look, you, Erica, look how cute they are. No, Send them out to die. And this one knows he's going to die. I think I won. He knows it's over. You got a spirit stone. That's nice. Sure. All right, I got one more move. All right. What would you advise, seeing as though the creator of the game is sat right next yeah. to me? Yeah. You should I don't send know. out some cute rabbits I would to die. Head towards this town over there. So go here. I'm going for this one. Yeah. And then, because you want to capture that town. It, all right, does it oh, matter yeah, where that he, he, This is what you want to do. Head there yep. to that. So and then use that card to pop wine stealth. on yourself. It's going to hurt you. No, he's not you. stealth. It's going to figure it yep. out. You want to know onto yourself. Yep. It's going to hurt you a little bit, but now you actually get an extra uh -huh. action point. So you can claim that before dawn, which will give you gold next uh -huh. time. You, did you drink some wine then, over there? I don't know what you're talking about. It's I, just like I gave me a notice that advantages. you're getting drunk. It's like, hey, the rat's over there getting drunk. It popped up a little notification. Hot um, rot wine. All right. So I'm going to have to battle right now. Yeah. I don't know if this Do is going to work. Let's see. Can I'm the Twitch stream and see that? Oh, there you Bam. Go. Nice. We're just going to start this right. He's got two health. I could still lose. If I roll wrong, yeah. I could still uh -oh. lose. Are you guys fighting? That's pretty I'm fighting right now. Oh, there's a fight. It's going oh on. My it's gosh, going down. For some reason, this looks so like cute. an unbalanced fight. About to kill this rabbit. <laughs> that is just Actually, so. Actually, I'm going to save that card. I'm going to go ahead and roll. He only has two dice. He's got one shield up. You're feeling confident. He's got one attack. I got oh, two shields. Oh, oh, dude, he's getting it. It's a stalemate. Oh, no. So it's a, it's a stalemate. Yeah. I got to fight him again. Do it. But there you it know what? I'm, I'm not. You I'm going to go. Oh, oh I you can't. can't afford it. No. That would have been a great little That's play. That's right. Here we go. Yeah. So you know what you need to do next turn, right? You need to now throw it back in his face and kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. So it's here's the science. thing. I really love Samurai Jack, and I yeah. will forever. And uh -oh. so when I ever see this kind of animation, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Like, I just want to watch them just stand in their Here battle poses for Doing an hour. Doing Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is he going to? So the guy. Oh, oh, oh. He killed him? Look at yeah. that. Boom. So we try to keep those things in, in the video kill. game as well that, uh, that everyone loves about board games and physical tabletop oh. games as well, like the dice rolls and the physicality of the Dude. cards and everything. Like the cards could easily just be abilities or something, you know, or the, or the rolls could happen automatically. Wait, See, it's, it's I, I don't like this 40% thing. Yeah, Take it. You don't have a 30%. Chance, no, Are you saying that you're you know, not really I'm going to give a plus one rot. You're a you know what? Here's the thing. Bear. I'm going to take it because it's 40% plus one rot, but I have an ability that if I go into this uh, Stonehenge next to me, it removes my All rot. Right, nice. So if I get it, I get it. Are you allowed to say nice. Stonehenge? Is that trademark? Can we just... <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, look, there, oh, oh, that was, yeah, yeah he got Oh, that it. was a confident YOLO. So, yeah. you know, 40% yeah. okay. works, guys. What about Sizzy? What did I get? What did I get? I we got an epic legendary. Is he not down here? If that even What? Exists. Well, I got Expendables, so. You got Expendables, oh, he might be right, stealth. So, yeah, and everyone's stealth, because it's nice. Oh, oh, right. There, you know, everyone's in different forests. Plus two shields? Oh. So at the start of every day, so there's a day and night cycle. So every two rounds, it gets back to dawn. And the king that. calls the player with the highest prestige, which is a stat that you gain from doing heroic deeds across Armello. So the king calls a prestige leader to advise him on what this dawn's declaration should be. And that's a global rule change that affects the game for like two rounds. That's cool. Yeah, so, what I like I, that. so what I just did right now is uh, I had a choice between picking swapping cards with oh. everybody, which meant I would have lost this amazing card, uh, or giving negative one prestige to someone who had rot. We're so early in the game, nobody had rot. Yeah. It was kind oh, of like rot a, wine a, doesn't count a as zeroed rot. out move. So it's never really a, you never get like a decision that super favors you or anything. It's sort of Yo. just like you're choosing the best of two bad decisions. Yo, oh. who's fighting Bob, me? You're fighting <laughs> again? Oh, you guys are fighting. Uh, you're fighting. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's all the me. time we have for yeah, this oh, game. Oh, phew, I stay alive then. <laughs> and uh, game thank game you ever. so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Pleasure. Right. Tell to play it. Enjoy the rest of the show, guys. Uh, You've already got a kill. Next next issues. Issues. I and we'll <laughs> be right back with Aaron Reynolds from Nevermind. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to Skybound for more awesome content from IndieKid. We have developer conversations with some really cool games for the rest of the week. If you haven't checked out our Mellow on Steam, make sure you do it. If you're into tabletop games at all, it's definitely worth checking out. And let us know in the comments below if you've played our Mellow and if so, what you think. Later. <laughs>